You're watching Sports Force Extra on KTIV. Welcome back, folks. Now, this week for our game of the week, we head into the Cornhusker State for a battle in one of the toughest districts in Nebraska where each point could be the difference in your team reaching the postseason. So we head to Hardington, Nebraska, where the Cedar Catholic Trojans, they've rattled off four straight wins since a season opening loss, and they would love to go 2-0 in their district, but they would need to defend home turf against an undefeated Battle Creek squad fresh off of a win in an all-time classic against Oakland Cray. We, now this game could have a massive impact on the C2 District 3 standings. We head on out to Hardington starting in the third quarter. Cedar Catholic leading by six. Battle Creek gets the QB sneak on fourth and one to keep the drive alive into the fourth quarter, and they would seal that drive with this pass from Jackson Mettler to Aiden Pochop. And after the successful PAT, the Braves take a 14 to 13 lead. Later in the fourth, the Trojans, they're trying to answer here, but uh-oh, it's Connor Nahalfin getting to Braden Reifenrath for the sack. Trojans, they would pin the Braves deep, flip the field. That would then lead to Reef and Rath going in for the go-ahead score on the QB sneak, but they would only lead by five after that. They go for two. Reef and Rath takes the bootleg to the near front pylon, and Reef and Rath is in. Cedar Catholic leads 21 to 14. Last play of the game. Battle Creek looking for a Hail Mary. Here's the heave into no man's land. It falls out of bounds. And the sixth ranked Trojans pull off the upset over the second ranked Braves, 21 to 14. Sports Forces Irvin Doman, he's in Hardington right now. Walk us through this one, Irv. Well, Jason, my heartbeat still probably well above average after that thriller right there. And that's exactly what everyone should have expected from this game. From the sixth ranked Trojans who have fought in every single game they've been in this year, only one loss coming into this one, which was against the defending C1 champions in Boone Central. Now, Battle Creek, they fought in that early third quarter to take that lead back because basically that whole first half, as of people recounting to me on the sideline as to what I missed, they said Cedar Catholic was pretty in firm control right there. And then when Battle Creek got things going, momentum started to shift. And then Cedar Catholic, they had to settle in. And I tell you what, one of the keys to settling in was special teams. They had a beautiful punt that pinned Battle Creek inside of the five. And that led to a punt from inside the end zone on Battle Creek's side. And then that led to a beautiful punt return putting Reifenrath in position for that QB sneak that gave them the lead and an awesome bootleg and way to take a hit right there by Reifenrath to get in. And and really, this was an all-time classic. And I talked with Reifenrath and Chad Cotto, the Trojans head coach, and they both said that this was going to be a dogfight. Everyone in the stands, everyone on the sidelines, they knew it. But this is exactly what everyone expects from this Class C2 District 3 featuring Norfolk Catholic, Battle Creek, Cedar Catholic, and even... Um, another team that's really well, it's blanking on the top of my head, but a loaded Class C2 District 3. That's what everyone expects, and Coach couldn't be more proud of his group. Uh, you know, I thought we got off to a good start. Uh, you know, we got a three and out, made them punt early, and, and we think we went down and scored maybe on our first drive, or early on anyway, and and it really gave us some some mental focus and, and a belief that we could go out and win this thing. Coming into it, we knew it was going to be a dogfight. We knew it was going to be no easy task to take down a team like that. But, you know, we knew we were capable of it. We knew we had a great team. And, you know, it was an emotional, emotional game, uh, a lot of intensity, and felt we brought that tonight. The Oakland Craig Knights was the other team in that C2 District 3 that I was trying to think of for a second there. But coming up next week, it does maybe get a little easier for both of these teams. Cedar Catholic, they take on the Ponca Indians. And then Battle Creek, they take on West Point Beamers. So definitely these two teams are teams to keep an eye out for as we head into the postseason. But that's all I've got from Hardington. I'll send it back to Jason in the studio. All right, thank you, Irvin. Now, just down the road from Hardington, fourth-ranked Crofton hosting Niobrara Verdigree. First possession for the Warriors. It's a toss to their senior running back, Wyatt Tramp, who finds some space up the far sideline, gets the stiff arm on the Cougar defender, and he's gone for a house call. That'll make it 8-0 in the first quarter. Warriors 
back with the ball. And this time, Tyson Jackson drops back to pass, but a swarm of Cougars, or a pack of Cougars that swarm him, and that's a sack. But it wouldn't take long for Crofton to get back on track. Tramp takes the toss, goes in between the tackles again, throws the stiff arm and scores. It's 16 other Warriors. They keep the scoring coming. Be a Tramp again. The toss, this time from a couple yards out. Crofton, they take the win in this one, 56 to 16. At the Dakota Dome, the Vermilion Tanagers take their shot at top ranked Sioux Falls Christian. We'll start off Chargers with the ball. Braden Witte takes the snap. Takes it himself, sliding into the end zone there for the Chargers' first touchdown of the night. Later on here, Lincoln Prinz, he's going to take the ball. Now, he can't find anyone downfield, but Prinz will take it himself. However, he's going to get smothered by Raleigh French for the Tanager sack. Into the second quarter we go here. Sioux Falls Christian once again with the ball. Prince steps back. This time he'll find someone downfield, and he'll toss a dime to Cole Snyder. Snyder will finish the job, taking it in for the touchdown. Chargers take the win in this one, 43-7. Fourth-ranked Dakota Valley hosting Beersford on homecoming night. The Watchdogs, though, looking to ruin it. Third quarter, Ashton Overly tosses this one down the field to a wide-open Malachi James, and Malachi will take this one all the way for the touchdown. That's a big play there for Beersford. Later on for Dakota Valley, though. Drew Luckin takes the snap, and he'll sling it to Bennett Luckin. Or actually, he'll sneak in for a Panthers touchdown. That puts him up 19 to 12. Into the fourth quarter we go. Drew Luckin, he'll give it to Bennett Luckin again, and again he'll ram his way through the beers for D-line into the end zone. Dakota Valley takes the win in this one, 33 to 12. Wrap up our highlights. The Raiders of Gabeville Vollen hosting Sioux Falls Lutheran. Already up 16-0 here. Spencer Karstens, he'll go to the air, and he'll hit Hunter Weaven for his second touchdown of the game. That'll make it 23-0 before the half. Right, Actually, sorry, right before halftime, Karstens again to a wide open Jordan Westerwald, and it's 30-0 at the break. Then the effort of the night. Looks like the Eagles have Karstens sacked. But he gets away, delivers on his way down to Wyatt Melhoff for the score. Gayville Vollen gets the win in this one, 37 to 12. And hey, it's time for Fan Force. Let's go ahead and see what you guys were up to out in Siouxland tonight watching those games. Here's our first one, Melanie Cash. Hey, we know her husband. He works here. Thank you very much for sending that one in, Melanie. She was at the MOC Floyd Valley SBL game. This is Michael Wolgan. He tends to pop up on our fan forces a little bit. That's at the Unity Christian CLGLR game. They were celebrating 20 years of Unity football at that game. And our final fan force picture of the night comes from Christy Locker at the Hardington Cedar Catholic and Battle Creek game. Tell you what, folks, if you want to be a part of the fan force, hey, next Friday, find yourself at a game, snap a picture of yourself, maybe a couple of friends, send that on in to connect at KTIV.com. You could be on fan force. We're the Cedar Catholic Dance Team. And Sports Force Extra will be right back. If you